A mutation is a change in an organism's DNA. A change in DNA results in a change in protein. Mutations happen during the S phase of DNA synthesis when replication takes place. One nucleotide gets changed, added, or deleted during replication, and this has a ripple effect seen across transcription and translation, resulting in a different protein and enzyme that's produced. Not all mutations are bad. Some are advantageous and allow species to survive. Today we'll study mutations and how it's a natural process that keeps changing DNA, and it has implications later on when we study evolution. So now you understand, a change in DNA results in a change in protein, and one of the first types of mutations that we'll look at is something called a point mutation, and this results in a disease called sickle cell anemia. And in this disease, what happens is your red blood cell becomes deformed and elongated. So normally a red blood cell is supposed to be circular and round so that it travels to the bloodstream easily, but when it's deformed like this, um, it gets caught and people with this disease tend to feel really fatigued they have shortness of breath and so forth. So a point mutation, again, is just when one nucleotide is substituted for another. So all it takes is just one mutation to happen during replication, and there is a domino effect in transcription and translation. So glutamic acid is substituted by valine, and this causes an incorrect folding of a protein which then results in this abnormal blood cell shape. So we'll examine this sequence here of amino acids, and we'll look at glutamic acid, okay, which according to the Codon Dictionary has the sequence GAG. Okay, but what happens is your A gets substituted and it becomes a T, but remember in mRNA, a T is replaced by a U. So um, if you look at the codon dictionary, what happens is glutamic acid, which is GAG, becomes GUG, and that becomes valine. So one amino acid changed, and now the protein can't fold correctly, and because it can't do that, it results in the sickle cell uh, blood cell. So again, one nucleotide gets changed, added or deleted, and then we see this ripple effect that occurs. Okay, so this happens during replication, and then when the cell is ready to make proteins and enzymes, it's gonna mess up during transcription and translation. Strangely enough, there is something known as the heterozygous advantage in certain traits and diseases, and this is seen in sickle cell anemia, and it's prevalent in people with African ancestry because Sickle cell causes this deformity in your red blood cell. The red blood cell actually becomes inefficient at traveling through the bloodstream. So in Africa, where malaria is a huge problem, people with sickle cell anemia tend to survive this disease. They tend to do better against it because the sickle cell shape actually disrupts the normal life cycle of the parasites that depend on these blood cells in order to reproduce, and if the parasite takes over your body, then you have malaria. But sickle cell actually slows down this process. We'll now look at something called a frame shift mutation, and this involves insertion or deletion of a nucleotide in a DNA sequence. So an example of this would be Tay-Sachs disease, which is a disorder that destroys nerve cells in the brain and the spinal cord. You can see the boy pictured there has no mobility, he's confined to a wheelchair, and symptoms usually appear at a very young age, and the children end up dying at around age 4. So we'll look at this sequence here of DNA that I boxed in blue. So DNA will undergo transcription, and then it forms the RNA, and it will code for serine. Okay, you can see in the codon dictionary there. Okay. But now what happens is a base gets deleted in the sequence. So we'll look at how this occurs and where it occurs. So that G gets deleted. So that ends up shifting the whole entire sequence. Everything is now off by one. It's misaligned. And this has a ripple effect for the whole entire DNA sequence. There's like millions and millions and billions of bases that might code for a gene. And now instead of the normal nucleotide, everything got shifted over by one. 
okay, in this code on here, but luckily UCG still codes for serine. So you could see in the code on dictionary where I boxed two of them in red. Um, that was actually uh, a fortunate situation where the serine actually remained. So it's okay. But remember, because you have millions of these bases, the next one that's in line will actually end up getting shifted. Because if you look at the normal sequence, there was an A sitting at the end there that you just didn't see. It was outside of the frame. Okay, so now you have an entirely different codon. So TAA will then code for AUU. And this now brings in um, isoleucine. It's a different amino acid. So instead of aspartic acid, in the normal sequence, Okay, you have leucine, glutamine, serine, leucine, glutamine, serine. Those first three are okay. And in the normal sequence, the fourth amino acid is the one that I've circled there in red, aspartic acid. So that's your normal amino acid there. That one got replaced by isoleucine. So the fourth amino acid in the chain was changed because of one mutation one base got deleted and this ended up shifting the whole sequence and this will result in a different protein because of how things fold they all have slightly different chemical structures so something like this can result in a disease like Tay-Sachs so now let's compare and contrast the different types of mutations you have insertion and deletion which results in a frame shift and you also have a point mutation, which may or may not be bad. So in my opinion, I would say an insertion or deletion uh, is much worse because it can cause an inherited disease because everything got shifted in the chain. And you'll see here what I'm drawing in. So I'm going to draw in a cytosine, which binds to guanine there in red. Okay, that's known as an insertion. Now that bracket, I'm showing you the, the original codon, the original triplet that was aligned okay but again if I just stick in one random nucleotide during DNA synthesis right, there's errors that might occur and the checkpoints don't catch this in time um, this can have a ripple effect okay so in red those were the original codons and now in blue I'm now bracketing the triplets Right? Because we added one nucleotide, everything got misaligned and shifted. Everything was off by one. Okay, so obviously, your new codons would then tell your tRNA to bring on a different amino acid. And now you're building an entirely different protein, right? Because your amino acid chain is completely different. So this occurs when there's an insertion. A deletion would actually cause the same thing to occur if I just delete one of the nucleotides, everything would then just get shifted over in the other direction, okay? But it still results in different amino acids. All right, so I would say insertion and deletion are a lot worse than a point mutation. A point mutation you can think of as replacing one of the nucleotides, one of the bases. Okay, so here I'm gonna box this G, this guanine, and then let's just say it mutates and it becomes an A. So the complementary strand would then bind a thymine to the adenine on the main strand. And now this is our codon. Okay, that would be the codon. And obviously that would then encode for mRNA and then tRNA. There is a whole ripple effect. Okay, if something messes up during replication, it's going to mess up transcription, and it's also going to mess up your translation whenever you're building proteins. Okay, and so your codon is now different for mRNA, and your anticodon for tRNA is completely different. And now your amino acids are all uh, in different places. Okay, but this may or may not be bad. A point mutation because there's a lot of redundancy in the codon dictionary.
okay, one amino acid might have like four entire different codes. So you might get lucky, you might have a mutation, but it actually does nothing. It doesn't really change anything at all. You'll still get the same amino acid. Okay, and then um, last, I just want to point out, you might have non-coding regions on your DNA sequence where it's just random nucleotides that are there, but it doesn't code for any sort of genes or proteins. Okay, it's just dormant. It doesn't really do anything, it's just there. So there's no gene that gets encoded. So even if all six of these nucleotides in that red box were somehow mutated and they were somehow changed, it's not gonna cause any sort of effect, good or bad because it's a non-coding region of DNA. So it's like you, you got fortunate and you got lucky there. Okay, however, you might have a sequence here that follows that codes for proteins. So even though the there was a mutation that occurred in that red box, it doesn't affect the protein that gets coded after. So it's hit or miss. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you're unlucky. To summarize, I just want to show you one of the videos that was in uh, the previous uh, part two. So during replication and transcription and translation, all it takes is for one nucleotide to get messed up during DNA synthesis. And then you end up with some sort of inherited disease or disorder like Tay-Sachs or sickle cell anemia. So you can see how fragile this process is okay because like look at all the millions of nucleotides that have to be produced and have to be linked up together obviously there's going to be errors that are made along the way and you can end up with a bad copy of mrna that gets sent out during transcription and then this mrna then um, will travel to the ribosome where it undergoes translation to link up amino acids to make protein so you'll see this occur Right, so that was a deletion right there, right, as it's making edits and stuff. So um, think about how fast this process has to occur um, in a cell, right? It's making millions and millions and millions and trillions of these nucleotides link up. So it's very easy for an error to occur. But um, fortunately, you do have checkpoints during mitosis, during the cell cycle, that is a quality assurance and makes sure that the DNA is good to go. Okay, but you can see here, mRNA will then go to the ribosome and it's going to bring in transfer RNA, the anticodons that match up, that are complementary to the mRNA strand. And this is how it churns out proteins because the tRNA is carrying the circle amino acids that you see there, the purple circles. And those amino acids will then link up and it's creating a protein chain. But again, if one, uh, one amino acid gets changed, then the whole protein is now deformed, right? Because it then has to fold into a certain shape. So there you have it. That is mutation.